I'm Dr. April Strong, and in today's video, what we're going to explore is the derivative of tangent x. So the thing, though, that we have to remember about the trig functions are the derivatives of the sine and the cosine, because these are going to help us figure out what the derivative of tan x is. So just a reminder, sine x's derivative is, in fact, cosine x, and cosine x's derivative is negative sine x. Okay, so we're going to use those ideas to help us figure out derivative of tangent x. The other piece of information that I would like to also bring in is how else to think about tangent x. So just a reminder here, tangent x is the same thing as sine x divided by cosine x. This is just a rewritten form of what tangent x is defined to be, sine x over cosine x. So if I remember that, I can now try to tackle my derivative of tangent x. And first what I'll do is, let's go ahead and just rewrite tangent x to be sine over cosine. So we have now sine x divided by cosine x, and of course I need to take the derivative of that whole quotient. Well, the other rule I need to bring in is now that I have introduced a quotient, I have to use the quotient rule to handle this derivative. But the good news is this now quotient is all in terms of sines and cosines, and I remember what the derivative of those things are. So here we go. We're going to use the quotient rule to tackle this. Quotient rule, just as a reminder, says I need to take the derivative of the numerator times the denominator. So I start off with sine x's derivative times cosine x, which was my denominator, okay? And once I do that piece, I need to subtract off the numerator as is, so sine x times the derivative of the denominator, cosine x. Now, of course, we can't forget all of that is being divided by the denominator cosine x, but squared. So whatever you have in that denominator, put it on bottom and square it. You're not taking the derivative of that denominator here or any piece of that. The derivatives only come up in this top section here and here. So what I've done here, I haven't actually taken the derivative of the pieces yet. I've just tackled the quotient rule part. Now, my next step, I'm gonna take the derivative of the actual pieces. So derivative of sine x. Oh, we were reminded over here, derivative of sine x is cosine x. So I can replace this derivative of sine x with cosine x. But note, I already have a cosine x right next to it. No biggie, I'm just gonna write it down. I now have cosine x times another cosine x minus sine x times the derivative of cosine x. And just pointing over here, derivative of cosine x is in fact negative sine x. So I have a negative sine x that gets put in place of the cosine x's derivative. And of course, I still have all of this being divided by cosine x quantity squared. Now just to note, you can keep writing this as cosine x quantity squared, or alternatively, you could write that quantity in the denominator as cosine squared x. But be careful, it's not cosine x squared without parentheses. So it's either written this way with parentheses or this way without parentheses. Okay, so now just to do a little bit of algebra to clean up things, cosine x times itself again, I'm gonna have cosine squared x. Let me write it that way. And then I have minus sine x times a negative sine x. The negatives will make us have a plus up here. And then sine x times itself will give me sine squared x. And then of course, I still have all of that being divided by cosine squared x. Now, don't get too um, outrageous when you're dividing out parts and think like, oh, maybe I could divide out cosine squared x here because it matches there in the denominator. We're not allowed to actually, in that case, divide out those cosine squareds because one doesn't sit over here with the sine squared. However, I have another rule. This is rule-laden problem. I have another rule that says, you know what? We can actually replace sine, uh, cosine squared x plus sine squared x with a nice number, because it turns out, if I recall the most famous trig identity of all, I have this, sine squared plus cosine squared is one, and this can be written in any order because addition is commutative. And so I can come back over here and say, oh, that's just a fancy way of writing the number one. 
and let's put that in to simplify life. So I have one on the numerator now, in the bottom I have cosine squared x. And that is my derivative for the tangent x. Um, you can actually also rewrite one over cosine squared to be secant squared x if you like. But probably more often than not, we tend to go the cosine route and write tangent x's derivative as one over cosine squared x. But I'm gonna box both of these because both of them are technically the final result of the derivative of tangent x. All right, in my next video, I'm gonna show you an example of how to use the derivative of tangent x.